What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to verify this identity. Now, a lot of times when the students are looking at a dining deal, identity like this, they might get confused because they might not know their identity. So you gotta know your identities, right? Whenever you see a X divided by two, you should be thinking of the half angle formula. So if you don't know the half angle formula, then you're not gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to be able to um, simplify this expression because even if you were to simplify the right hand side, like you said, all right, this was more complicated. Let me go ahead and subtract these. You still need to understand what the right hand side is going to be equal to this half angle formula. So if the half angle formulas uh, for tangent here are going to, let's look like this here. These are your half angle formulas for tangent. Okay. Now again, they're using a instead of X and whatever, that's fine. So this is what the half angle of tangent or tangent of a half angle is going to equal to. Now, here's the thing. One, you got to know your identities, right? You got to know your half angle identities, your sum and difference, your double angle, um, you know, the product sum. Um, if I, you know, from on there, like, so it's very important to know your identities. And at least as me as a teacher, I would always give my identities to students um, because I always felt like they would understand the identities if they practice them over and over and over again. Because it's much better than like, when are you ever going to like use these in your real life, right? Not really as much. You're not going to really memorize these. But if you do enough practice problems with these, you can like remember them you know, um, you can remember them to a certain degree. And usually, you know, every year I always like quickly, I'm able to remember what exactly the identities are. Um, but even as a teacher, I forget them. So here's your effing identities. Now, which one identity are you going to choose? Right? I think majority of us are saying, I'm not going to choose this first identity, right? Because why would you want to introduce a square root? Is there any square root on the right-hand side? No. So why would you want to choose a square root on the left-hand side? There's no reason to. So don't do that. Um, and what about the same thing, like same kind of thought process can be applied here on to this one. Like, why do you want a plus if on the right hand side has a subtraction, then why do you want to include an identity with a plus you don't? So the, so the one identity you're going to want to know or use is the one that you feel can be uh, most easily converted or to be, you know, rewritten on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do here then is say, all right, one minus a cosine. Now again, we're using X, not a right all over a sine of X, and that's going to be equal to this right-hand side. All right. Now, how are we going to go ahead and make the left-hand side look like the right-hand side? Now, one thing I notice here is one over, like if you were actually to rewrite this, you could rewrite this as a one over a sine of X minus a cosine of X over a sine of X. And then it gets me thinking like, hmm, like if I rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to distribute this sine of X into the one as well as the cosine of X, right? Think of the distributive property. So therefore I can rewrite this as a one over a sine of X minus a cosine of X all over a sine of X. And then now that is going to equal to the right-hand side, which again, you can now go ahead and rewrite this here as a cosecant of X minus a cotangent of X, which you can now see has now been verified. Now, sometimes getting rid of the denominator is not that easy. Sometimes you need to apply the secret weapon. And in the next video, I'll tell you exactly what that secret weapon is of getting rid of your denominators. I'll see you then.